Identification, evaluation, and management of transient ischemic attack. A 78-year-old man with hypertension presents to the emergency department after a 15-minute episode of difficulty speaking and right face and arm weakness. His symptoms have completely resolved, and he feels as though he is back to normal. Vital signs are notable for a blood pressure of 142 over 88. Your neurological exam is normal. You are concerned that he has had a transient ischemic attack. What do you do next? TIAs are a neurological emergency defined as a transient episode of neurologic dysfunction caused by focal ischemia without acute infarction. Symptoms often localized to a single vascular territory of the brain, spinal cord, or the retina. TIAs can carry a significant risk of future stroke. Thus, they require prompt evaluation to identify and modify risk factors. TIA is distinguished from a stroke based on the presence of brain tissue infarction on the DWI sequences of a brain MRI. Presentation of TIA may vary, including transient monocular blindness or amaurosis fugax, weakness, or speech disturbances. TIAs also have a wide variety of atypical presentations, including vertigo, diplopia, and loss of coordination. It is important to consider a broad differential including seizures, migraines, syncope, transient global amnesia, hypoglycemia, and other metabolic disorders. A non-contrast head CT should be ordered to rule out any bleeding. A CTA head and neck can also be obtained at this time. If the patient is not otherwise anticoagulated and a head CT rules out hemorrhage, antiplatelet therapy should be started pending the remainder of the workup. The choice of antiplatelet therapy depends on the patient's risk of stroke. Low-risk patients should be started on aspirin, while high-risk patients should start dual antiplatelet therapy with aspirin and clopidogrel or ticagrelor. An easy-to-use tool to risk stratify patients is the ABCD2 score, age greater than or equal to 60, blood pressure greater than or equal to 140 over 90, clinical features of unilateral weakness or speech disturbance, duration of symptoms, and diabetes history. Patients with an ABCD2 score of 4 or higher should receive dual antiplatelet therapy. One note of caution, the predictive value of the ABCD2 has recently been called into question. Thus, some clinicians prefer other tools to define high-risk patients. Regardless of which tool you select, Implementation of a TIA protocol to risk stratify patients for appropriate workup has resulted in more accurate diagnoses of TIA, shorter hospital stays, and lower costs without worsening clinical outcomes. The evaluation of patients with TIA should also include vessel imaging, EKG in labs, MRI, echocardiogram, and cardiac monitoring with telemetry. If evidence of brain infarct is found, the diagnosis of stroke is made. Otherwise, the patient can be diagnosed with TIA, and any positive results from the workup should be treated appropriately. Patients with an LDL of greater than 70 should remain on a high-dose statin indefinitely. If you determine that the patient has a cardiac thrombus or atrial fibrillation, they should be treated with long-term anticoagulation. Finally, risk factor reduction for stroke is recommended including treatment of hypertension for a goal systolic blood pressure of less than 140, treatment of diabetes for a goal A1C of less than 7, and lifestyle modification, including smoking cessation, diet, and exercise. The patient's head CT showed no evidence of hemorrhage, and his CTA showed no significant stenosis or large vessel occlusion. MRI showed no stroke. His echocardiogram showed an ejection fraction of 60% without thrombus. LDL was 114, and he was sent home on 80 mg of atorvastatin, as well as 10 mg of lisinopril daily to manage his hypertension. His ABCD2 score was 5, and he was started on dual antiplatelet therapy with aspirin and clopidogrel for three weeks. He was counseled on lifestyle modification and reported no further symptoms at his two-month follow-up in the neurology clinic on aspirin monotherapy. For more information about this and other neurologic conditions, please visit aan.com slash neurobytes.